My first reading, I'm going to read from three places. First of all, in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis in chapter 22. I'm going to be reading from verse 1 till verse 14. Genesis chapter 22. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and says unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he says, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him there for the burnt offering. Upon the mountain which I tell thee, uh, tell thee of. And Abraham rose early in the morning and settled his donkey and took two of his young men with him. And Isaac his son cleft the wood and the burnt offering and rose up and went into the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place far off. And Abraham says unto his young men, Abide here with the donkey and I. And the lad will go uh, and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and laid it, uh, laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spoke, spoke unto Abraham, his father, and says, My father. And he says, Here am I, my son. He says, Behold, the fire and the wood, but there is... Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? What a question. And Abraham says, my son, God will provide him a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together and they came to a place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac, his son, and laid him upon the altar, upon the wood. And Abraham stretched his, forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and says, Abraham, Abraham. And he says, here am I. And he says, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thy anything unto him. For now I know thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looks and behold behind him a ram cat in the thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him, offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son Isaac. Second reading would be in the New Testament, Mark and chapter one. Mark chapter one for verse one only, one verse, verse 11. Mark chapter 1, verse 11. If you don't have your Bible, you can watch it here. You can see it here on the screen. Verse 11, the, then a voice came from heaven. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. The father speaking and saying, you are my beloved son to the Lord Jesus in whom I am well pleased. My last reading would be in Matthew chapter 27. Matthew 27, and we're going to be reading from verse 36. Matthew 27 and verse 36. And sitting down, they watched him there. And set up over his, uh, his head is uh, accusation written, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. There were two thieves crucified with him, one in on the right hand and the other on the left. And then, and they that passed by revealed him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that, that, that destroy the temple and build it in three days, save thyself if you are the Son of God. Come down from the cross. Likewise, also the chief priests mocking him and the, with the scribes and elders said, he save others himself he cannot save if he a king of the Jew of Israel. Let him come now down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him if he will have him. For he says, I am the son of God. 
verse 44, the thieves also were, which were crucified with him, caused the same in his teeth. Now for the sixth hour there was darken, darkness over all the land into the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama shabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And God promised to bless us his word to us. What a story in the Old Testament, story of Abraham and his son. Sometimes we we ask or we've been asked by others, what's the story in the, the gospel, the, 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 the Bible? Every book has a story. What's the Bible story? What's the theme in the Bible? Why the Bible is being written? And every book is written, has to have a theme, has to has a purpose for that book. To tell the truth, the theme of this Bible here is a love of God and his redemption to his people. His love and redemption, his love and sacrifice for humans that he created. He loved the human. God loved human. You ask me why? I don't know. Why did God love me and loved each one of us? Why, God, did you love us all? Why? Does anybody know why did God love us? No one knows why God loved us. In fact, there's a verse in the Bible that says God is love. Well, why would you love people like us? Why? You know, people think many reasons why, why God loved us. But no one has the real answer. We will find the answer when we go to heaven talking to the Christian. But if you're not Christian, I'm sorry, you won't make it there. That's why this evening, we come this evening here to tell you how to get to heaven, how you can make it to heaven. The way to heaven, it's not us. It's not through the gospel hall, just to let you know. It's not through people. It's not through religion. But it's a through a person. Through a person. And that person, his name is Jesus Christ. We read in the Old Testament about a story of a man named Abraham. I want you to close your eyes for one second and imagine. Go back in history and think a man, old man, taking his son. No one's closing their eyes. I'm just kidding. Think about Abraham, an elderly man. God told him, Abraham, Abraham, he says, here am I, Lord, what do you want? Well, there's something, Abraham, I want you to do for me. What is it, God? He says, I want you to take your son, your only son, Isaac. Well, let me tell you this. The Jews believe in this story that happened. Believe that God told Abraham to take his son. Jews believe in it. Religion of Judaism, they believe in it. When it comes to Islam, they believe in the story. But they believe that God offered not Isaac, offered Ishmael. I don't know where they get that from. How did they get to that conclusion that God gave Ishmael instead of Isaac? I have no idea. But a lot of people believe in Abraham. They know who Abraham is. Ask Muslims. Do you know who Abraham? Of course they know. But they don't know Isaac. They know Ishmael. But the real story is this. God says to Abraham, take thy son, thy only son, the one who you love. Well, he had two sons. But because he loved him so much that he was his beloved son. Take him. Take him more, God. Well, take him and offer him as a burnt offering. Think about this question here. This request from God to Abraham, take your son and slay him. Put him in the altar, take a knife and slay him. And Abraham slept that night. I don't know what went in his mind, 
what thoughts went to his mind. He would get up early in the morning. I don't know if he told his wife or not, but he told the son, we have a mission, son. The son says, of course, father, whatever you want. They went three days journey, not one day, not two, three days journey. Abraham thinking about the story. As a human being, he has to think. Imagine if it was you and me, what would you do? How would you react? A man, he's, he's asked a very, very big task. It's a big mission. He, can he do it? It says God tempted Abraham or tried Abraham in this matter. Abraham, he went three days journey and then he lifted up. He saw the mount. He saw the mountain. And he says to the servant, stay here with the donkey and I, my son, will go worship and come back. Notice he says, come back. they come back. So they went and Isaac, he was a young man. I don't know, maybe 15, 16. I don't know. The book doesn't say. But that age. His father took him, put him in the altar. Notice this. Imagine with me. Isaac did not do anything. He did not say to his father, Father, what are you doing? Are you going to kill me? He didn't say that. And he put him in the altar. He put the wood and he took the knife. Think about it. Took the knife and he wants to do what? To slay his son. Did God allow him to do that? No. Why didn't he, why did he ask him in the first place anyway? Why did God ask Abraham to do this in the first place if God knew that he would stop him from doing it? Well, there's a lot of answers. There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of things in this story. But one thing is the God giving us a glimpse of the future. If another father will sacrifice his son, he wants people to think that in the future there will be someone who will be offered and would be not spared. Isaac was what? Spared by God. God didn't let Abraham to kill his son. He spared him. He wants us to see and to realize there's a man who has a faith willing to do anything for God. But God didn't allow him to do that. What, did, what was offered instead of Isaac's place? It's forgotten. Whenever you hear the story, no one think about the ram cut. No one thinks about it, about him, that animal there. Well, it's a it's a it's a picture, right? It's a picture. A story is written in the Old Testament telling us what will happen in the future. And in heaven, you can ask Abraham when you get there, what went through your mind, Abraham? Abraham will tell you. I was going to obey God no matter what. But God revealed the truth to Abraham that one day God will give his son. One day in the future, God will give his son on the cross, will not spare him. We read in the New Testament how much God loved his son. He says, this is my well beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He cannot say that to you and me. Is he pleased with us 100%? No, he's not. Through Christ, yes. By ourselves, I'm sorry. No one come close. No one can come close to the Lord Jesus' position. He's a son. He's the unique one. He's the holy one. The hymn writer says, Behold, the spotless victim dies. My shorty on the cross, on the tree, the Lamb of God, the sacrifice He gave Himself for me. Jesus Christ was in that cross for me. Whatever curse was mine, He bore. The wormwoods and gall, there in that lone, mysterious hours, my cup drained it all. Lord Jesus, Thou. And none beside thee, none beside thee. The Father in the New Testament, 
It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? Why, God, would you give your son? For who? For wicked people? For people who say that we don't want you, God, depart from us? That's how much God loves you. That's how much God loves you. That you are the sinner one, the last one, the bad one. And God says, I am willing to give my son to die on the cross for you. Oh, what a love. What a love that God, he gave his son. He gave his son. You know, I always remember, does anybody know John Wilterhouse? Here, most of us know John Wilterhouse. He was a, 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 a true shepherd, to tell the truth. He was an elder. Whenever he goes somewhere to preach the gospel, he calls me, brother, do you want to come with me help? Of course. He goes to Burgessville one day, and I said to him, of course, brother, but I'll come alone. So he went to Burgessville. He goes usually before half hour or 40 minutes. He waits there. And I go maybe sometimes in time. And that time I went late. I almost arrived there at six, seven, uh, seven o'clock exactly. And the meeting starts seven o'clock. He looked, he said, brother, where are you? I almost opened for you. I said, no, brother, I was going to open for you, but I'm sorry, I, I went a different city. I did a mistake. And he used to tell a story. And that story is a true story. And that story it happened. He, he said it happened. So I believe, I believed him. But I Googled that story. The story is about John, a man, his name is John, John Griffith. And Google says the bridge operator, a man who lived in Mississippi in 1937, who had a son. Well, of course, he was in his 20s and they had a son. So he loved his son so much. He was almost eight years old, loved him so much. Imagine eight years old, play with him. He hauled him. His, his universe, his son. He goes home. You see, the first thing he's tired, he sees his son smiling, running to, to, to embrace his father. And that's his, all his tiredness will go away. He relaxed because he loved his son so much. He loved him so much. And his son loved his father. He sometimes waits for his father's coming home. And one day his son says to his father, can I come with you, father, to work where you're working? Because there's a river and I want to fish. He says, of course, son, come. Come with me. And John decided to take his son with him. And his son went by the river fishing. And his father says, okay, let's eat right now. They ate. And in that bridge, there was a bridge that John is an operator. He has to put the bridge down. The train goes, bridge up, the ships goes. And there was a red light there. If the red light's on, then train is coming. You have to hurry up. You have a few minutes to put the bridge down. And while they were eating, they saw the light, red light. And John saw the red light. He left running to the control room to put that bridge down. Otherwise, how many people will die? Almost 400 people will die. Think about it. 400 people will die. He says to his son, stay there. Do not come. Stay where you are. Son, he says, okay, father. He's eight years old. What do you expect from him? While the father went, he get to the control room, and he looked around, no ships, small ships going through. He tried to put the bridge down. He looked at his son. He's not there. He was watching his son. Where are you, son? He couldn't see him. He saw him playing under that bridge. He had a few seconds to decide what to do. If he let the bridge down, what would happen to his son? He will be crushed. He will be killed. But if he doesn't do that, what happened to the 400 people? They will be all killed. Oh, what a decision he has to make, this man. What a decision that will change his life forever. How could you do that? 
It's your son, John. How could you do that? Your son. How about those people? They have maybe their children in, with them. Maybe they're adults, they're elderly with them. What happened to them? And John had to decide. You know what he did? He put the bridge down. And the train went fast. While John watching, his son under that bridge. He looked at the people. He saw people laughing, smiling, happy, drinking, dancing. You know what he says to those people? Don't you care? Don't you care that I gave my son to you? No one responds because they don't know. They don't know what happened. They don't know that this man, he gave his son for them. He cried out, don't you care? I only had one son. I gave him for you. And Brother John Walterhouse would say, those people didn't know. But you know, you know that God gave his son for you. What are you doing about it? Every Sunday you come here, you hear the message, and you come the way you came. You leave the when you come the way you come. Why? Knowing that God gave his son for you, and you're still rejecting him. And you tell me why God will judge you. He will judge you. Because he gave his son. He spared God, his son, to spare you, dear friend. What are you doing about him? What are you doing about him? On the cross, Jesus was there, not for his sin, for my sin and yours. Have you thought about the Lord Jesus and what he went through? Have you thought who Jesus is? God became a human and went to the cross and shed his precious blood so he can be spared this evening. And you're telling me what? God loves me? Of course he loves you. He gave his son. Think about this man, John. Those people didn't know what he did. But you know what he did. You know what God did. You know he was there for you. And you know all about him. Every Sunday you come and hear the message. And you leave cold hearted. You leave without knowing that one day you're going to stand before God. One day you're going to stand before God and you will tell him why. You know why God gave his son. So this evening you can come and say God. I take your son. I'm the sinner one. I'll take your son, God. I'm sorry. I'm a sinner. I'm lost. I deserve to be in hell. But I want to be saved. And God will save you. May God help you to realize that you're a sinner in need of Savior.